So we're here in Atlantic City at the Golden Nugget. We met up with Seakeeper to show, they're gonna show us theoretically, a brand new product that nobody has seen before. It's a vessel attitude control system. So it's in the place of the trim tabs, but it's completely different than what the trim tabs do, does. We haven't experienced it yet, but we're gonna do that right now. Let's go check it out. really 14 years ago, um, which is the, the company inception. Mm -hmm. So we had some version of this product. Um, and we did several developments over the last 14 years. And we never had the product that kind of put the smile on your face like the gyro does. You hit the button and it's holy shit. Right. It's wow, it's immediate. You don't have to tell people what it's doing, it just is wow. Um, so over these developments, um, you know, we got to the point where it was, we felt better than anything on the market today again, but not the Seakeeper wow. And we just focused our attention and energy on the gyro. Business was taken off. And three years ago, we really had a bunch of breakthroughs come together. You know, part our team, the you know structure we had uh, internally on software controls, and we had some mechanical breakthroughs that really came together to enable a system that you'll see today that provides the performance that we feel is like Seakeeper Bar. Um, okay. So, so 14 years you've been, you guys well, have been yeah, working I mean, on, we've been on this thing. We've been thinking about it, All playing right. with it. Knowing it was something we were going to do three years ago, we really said, this is what we're going to do. We set up a whole separate team, kind of like a Skunk Works, separate mm. R&D facility, and a ground up fundamental redesign of what transom systems are and what they do. Um, you know, and from the beginning, we did a lot of just fundamental physics testing about boat motion. What is boat motion? How is it different between boats, sea periods, you know, headings, speeds? How fast do you have to move a device to control the motions that happen instantaneous. You know, you're right. seeing motions in pitch and roll and yaw axis in you know, milliseconds. Unlike, you know, boat sure. motion at rest where it's, you know, four or five seconds. Sorts of mayhem. What size blue water is this? 28. The 28 blue water, just for reference. So, running about 37, 38 miles an hour, I believe, roughly. And we're doing quite a bit of bouncing, just like you would on any boat in these types of conditions. So, so what do we do to go ahead and turn this on? Just hit the button. All right, I haven't hit it yet. Ready? Kelsey, you still back there? All right, let's kick it in. 10 to 12 seconds. So you can see immediately, 10 to 12 seconds, it flattened us out perfectly. We're obviously in the same conditions. We haven't done any editing in this video right, right now. And it's like riding in a catalog. It is pretty impressive. So I'm gonna turn the wheel a little bit because you say, am I good in both directions here? Or? Yeah, you're pretty good. So what I feel is that it flattens out the plane of the boat. We're not doing any bouncing at all. So when you say we do some turns at these at these speeds, wow. Okay. 
That is pretty crazy. So the unit doesn't only come into play running straight, it actually affects the angle of your turns. So instead of taking a sharp turn and having the gunnel of the boat basically touching the water, they kind of found a, a middle point, correct? So what was the name of the, that you called it, the vessel? Uh, vessel Attitude Control System. Vessel Attitude Control System. So that's the cool part. It, it's not like a trim tab at all. It's not just leveling out the plane of the boat, it's, it's affecting the entire ride that we're, that we're experiencing out here. So the system, a couple kind of key points of it and features. Number one, most important performance, pitch and roll reduction. So again, you hit the button, it's wow. And it's hard to believe, um, but maybe after you see it, you'll... We've had a 22-foot bay boat out next to a 31-center console offshore, and 22-foot bay boat ran faster, less pitch, less roll, less pound than the 31 offshore with the system. <laughs> really? Um, so we're getting 50-70% uh, roll pitch reduction. And uh, the next thing I think is really important and what we're aiming to do here is change what it is to operate a boat. So this has several devices that will not be on production boats when you see it and, you know, hit the market in 23. So this is a development display. This is a development keypad. The whole point of this system is to be like a car. You turn it on, your automatic transmission, your anti-lock brakes. You don't think about it. You don't make any adjustments. It just rides and does the best that it can. Right. And that's what this system is. So we've developed this awesome UI, but we think we've done our job that you will never have to see this thing. So you turn the key, it's on. You don't make any adjustments. The system is plug and play. We worked really hard to make this so it's a do-it-yourself system eventually. Mm -hmm. We plan to sell direct to end users. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you talk about entry-level boats, there's just so many gadgets and things you have to play with, and most people don't even know how to use the tabs and ends up getting them in trouble. And you know, we sure. felt like if you can get rid of that and give everyone the absolute best experience without having to play with something else, hopefully you get more people in boating and staying in boating. So I think that's Definitely. the second most important feature of it. And then we have all the incremental features that are in some way being done today. You know, we're doing a bit different. So like, for example, um, list control. So there's boat uh, products, auto glide, or some things that four people move to the side, the boat lifts. Over a period of time, it will slowly correct that automatically. So this system, you will never have a list. So if you have five people and you run from one side of the boat to the other as fast as you can, it's not like it lists and then it corrects it, it will not list. That's how fast really? it's reacting. That's um, amazing. Then we have what we call a trim command curve. So that's the only uh, setting you will do for each boat. So essentially you run at a given speed, you say where you like the boat to run, and that's kind of a pre-setting, and then the boat works and stabilizes from there. And the other okay. is coordinated turn. Um, so when you go around the turn, right, you have the bank, which you know is uncomfortable if you're sitting in kind of the back corner and banking hard to the right, sure. close to the water. So we worked really hard on how much did we want to um, reduce that banking into the turn. So at one point we had it so it was completely flat, but it felt like a catamaran. It just didn't feel like it on a boat. It felt like going to launch a little bit. So we have it so it essentially banks about half as much as a normal boat, which we feel still gives you that boat feeling, um, but it improves. It's a little more turn. comfortable. Yeah, exactly. That's um, pretty interesting. Yeah, I guess that the trim position of every boat might be slightly different. So you're saying you set that depending on how you like to, to run your boat Specifically, depending on what, yep. what type of boat it is. Yep, and you do that once, and then that's it. And then the, the system will work from there. Um, so to do this, the system, we make 100 adjustments every second. So we're switching oh, wow. position up, down. You know, when they're working together to control pitch, they're going down or up together. Independently, they're controlling either roll or yaw. So 100 adjustments a second, and they can move 300 millimeters per second. So wow. they can move something in the range of you know, 15 inches per second they can travel. So real quick, we're gonna go ahead and get the blue water on plane, gonna run it for a few seconds without the system on. And then we're gonna click it on so you can see the difference. Let's go ahead and see what it does. You guys ready?
Am I good this direction or yeah, fell left yeah, a little? That right there. We got yeah, to settle in where the boat feels good to you. Yeah. Just let me know when you want. I can hook it on or you you can have. You can see, huh? Right. Let's show the balancing a little bit. You can see what the boat's doing. And it's not, doesn't have anything to do with the blue water. It's just a chop out here. So we're doing about 40 miles an hour right now. You can barely see what's ahead of us. Andrew's taking care of my wingman out here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click it on once it's, let us hit a little chop there. We're actually kind of a smooth spot. All right, here we go. There you go, you can see it immediately flattens us out and we just start running like a car. They say the unit makes 100 movements a second, so it's reacting to absolutely everything we come across, which obviously there's no way that it can know about it. It's reacting by the second. Definitely makes a huge difference on, on the comfort level riding in these conditions here. And you definitely can, can see it on the 21 Sportsman even more than this boat. And is, it, is this working in conjunction with the gyro? Nope. So today we have no gyro on. Okay. Um, and what we see is obviously it doesn't change the pitch at all if you have the gyro with it. But we'll typically like we'll do a recording when we're out there. So let's say we're getting 50% roll reduction underway with this on. When you add the gyro to it, we we're typically getting like 10 to 20% additional roll performance. So the perfect combo is the gyro in this, the gyro at rest. And then you have the pitch for solely with this system, and then they work in combination to reduce roll um, when you're underway. Very good. Yeah, especially lately after COVID, seeing so many new boaters, we've seen it. I have friends that have never touched a boat in their life and just jumped into a 37 axle bar, having no idea what a trim tab is or how to use it. And I, I think a lot of a lot of people out there, boaters, think they may know how to use trim tabs properly, but just listening to conversations. You know, I think most, most people don't. I probably don't know how to use them properly myself. I know what makes it more comfortable for me personally, but you know, a system that can take that guesswork and human error out of the way, you know, is, is brilliant. Well, and, it, and even for, you know, very veteran voters, right, that you know how, it's just something more you have to do. Yeah, yeah, it's another um, and I think thing like you have to worry about. It's not only like the, the, you know, not having to mess with the tabs. You'll see when you're out there and you're running, when you're out and rough, right, you're constantly either right adjusting steering, playing with the tabs, playing with the throttle, trying to find the perfect performance, whatever heading, speed, and mm -hmm. that's constantly changing. So this, when you set it, you'll also a lot better in terms of steering. You won't have to mess with the throttles as much. So I mean, it's just a total different boating experience. Yeah, notice with the obviously the smaller boats are the ones that get pushed around more. You know, the larger boats you feel it, but that 23 reef runner with the with the Sea Keeper one, that was. Night and day, because you're in the bay with a one and a half foot chop, and you're rocking around on that boat. Yeah. Um, just because of the size, so you click that sea keeper on. It's it's crazy. And we've worked relentlessly hard, and you have a, a one on your small boat to bring gyros down as small as we can. Yep. And it got to a point where, right, we knew that we wanted to get into 18 foot boats, and we thought it was going to be a challenge to get there with the gyro, at least for now. Um, and you know we wanted to impact that experience for those and like I said get more people in boating stay in boating so we will launch um, solely 18 to say 35 foot single dual engine um, you know for model year 23 and then we will start going up the size range like the gyro or vice versa where we went down and what gotcha. we did is we called 10 to 12 OEMs about six months ago when we had the system where we were really proud of it and we didn't tell them what it was. We said, listen, we have something that you have to try. Um, trust us. 
um, fly up to Atlantic City and do it. And we wouldn't tell them anything because we were scared. As soon as we said, hey, it's some transom, they'd be like, oh, it's a, a zip wig, right? Some other. Mm. And uh, we wanted them to hit that button and have that wow experience. So they all traveled up. Um, and everyone had that wow experience. And they came back and they were like, all right, yeah, we want to offer it. These are the boats. And we were kind of like, well, listen, like we're not going to allow this to be sold as an option. We don't want this to be thought of as a luxury option. This is a must have. And we want to align ourselves with builders that feel the same. And so when we launch here in model year 23, we will launch with three to four builders that will put this a standard product across their portfolios. Oh, really? Um, all the way down to a Sportsman 21. So when you buy that boat, model year 23, you come exactly like that, fit with the system standard, up to, you know, we're doing a 35 Chris Craft. That's 500,000. So from 50,000 to 500,000. Wow. And we've worked really hard, made a lot of investments to get the price point um, to a place that, again, it's accessible for every boat and can get on the most entry level of boats. All right, we got the 21 Sportsman. I'm going to go ahead and jump on that to see what the what it feels like on the smaller boat. Now, every Sportsman coming out of the factory is going to come with this ride system on it, so it's very exciting. A few other OEMs are, uh, as well we're going to mention here in the near future when we step inside and show you the unit from their uh, presentation they have set up in there. I just got to go for it. All right, I'm pushing off. All right, here it goes. How is it on this thing? <laughs> All right, so I'm on the 21 Sportsman right now. Just get the feel on the smaller boat. That's where I feel you're going to really notice the difference. It's at least two to three out here. Maybe some larger swells, rain. Run by the blue water. First, with the system disengaged and then engaged, so you can see how it looks and really affects the entire ride. You can see we just took one over the starboard side. So, let's give this a shot, see how it does. that one more noticeable on this side I think
right, so at this point, I was able to jump on the 28 Blue Water, and right now we're on the Sportsman uh, 210, the 21. So you can feel the, di the difference on the 28, but when you get on the smaller boat, you really notice it. It was two to three feet out there realistically, four to five second intervals, windy, rainy, it was ugly. Not normal conditions you wanna be out on a boat like this, but with that ride system, it really makes it comfortable. So we did a couple of runs, hopefully you'll be able to see in this video, bow towards the blue water with the system disengaged. So you can see the waves kind of having its way with the sportsman. When you actually clicked it in gear, you can see that this thing not only brings the bow down and levels the boat out, but it balances out and actually helps you almost keep your trajectory better because it doesn't let that wave kind of throw you in the direction that physics wants to throw it kind of counteracts it and it has a hundred different movements per second so it's dead instant and you feel it automatically within a few seconds you feel it go and you're kind of riding like a Cadillac compared to out of control like most you know if you're not using any trim tabs a boat would do in this type of condition so super impressive and it was nice to be able to see it on 28 blue water as well as a smaller 21 foot sportsman which will have these things standard on every single one of their boats now going forward so pretty exciting for a sea keeper very exciting product overall and what we expect from this group, just innovating and changing the boating industry altogether. Okay, so we just got out of the rain, off the blue water, and the sportsmen came inside the Golden Nugget. They have this conference room set up, so we're gonna go through a little bit of detail with a presentation that Andrew has set up with us, and they have a simulator here that we wanna check out as well. Cover it down, that's all the way to the plate, that's all it is. So you feel that blade come down? Oh, yeah, so it cups it a little? Yep. These are the components. Um, so again, it was really important to us to make this user friendly um, so someone could do it and install it themselves. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that we could have one build material simple um, that we could use one wedge pack, one set of fasteners. Um, and it sounds easy, but it was really challenging for all the different transoms that you um, that you see. But you have your transom plate that um, you know, adheres onto the transom using uh, plexus. And then you have wedge pack, which you will, will say, hey, if you have this degree of transom, use these wedges. And then you will fasten that together. And then this is the rotary actuator. Um, if you pick that up, the rotary actuator is probably like 11 or 12 pounds each one. Um, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the cylinder you see there. And then you have the seal plate and then that rotary blade. And that's the complete transom uh, controller assembly. Like who needs a keypad? Like let's develop this UI. Put a lot of time in to make this super user friendly. I mean, it's simple, right? And that's how a UI should be. Um, and sometimes making simple things is the hardest thing. Um, but at the end, now that we have it where it is, I mean, I hope someone never sees it, you know? And if, if they do, we did our job. Unless someone wants to kind of show this thing off, turn it on and off, but um, you know, the way that we have Just it. Just keep it engaged the whole time. Turn the turn engines on and and it's on. All right guys, come take a look at this. Here we have the 18 inch Seakeeper ride unit on the simulator that they have here to show us. This is made out of a sheet molded compound, which is 60 to 70% the strength of aluminum. It's not a plastic material, very strong. And this is adhered with no through bolts, no nothing. They actually plexus this to the unit. And this is the full range of motion you see in action as we speak. So obviously the simulator is picking up speed, showing how quick and how it makes the 100 movements per second to be able to stabilize this boat and stabilize the pitch and the roll while you're under, uh, while you're navigating. So it looks like the weather may give us a bit of a window to put the drone up in the air. And what we want to do is get two Blue Water 28 side by side so you can see an exact comparison, one with the ride unit engaged and one with it turned off. So it should be pretty cool to see. Let's see if Mother Nature gives us a break so we can make it happen. <laughs>
Andrew, I want to thank you for having us. Congratulations, man. Out. Definitely got to be cool. Andrew was telling, telling us that he's been around since the beginning, 2008, I think he told us. Five of us in a house when we started. Five, yeah, five people in a house um, and how it got started, super cool. You guys deserve all the success to be able to innovate the way you do and actually see it all the way to, you know, putting it out into the public and just like the gyro is a stand, standard feature on most boats that we see now, uh, I have no doubt that this product is going to do the same. As you said, it, I see this even hitting more of the population than the gyro. Um, so congrats. Thank you again and thank you for showing us what you guys are capable of. Never cease to, uh, to, to amaze us, man. Incredible. Thanks thank again. you again. Appreciate it. It was fun. Next time bring one more jacket for me. <laughs> Vinny! Again. Likewise, man. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I hope you guys uh, got some good footage and enjoy, yeah. enjoyed ride. No, I, I I appreciate the sacrifice you made, cranking <laughs> that that sea, that sportsman through uh through that. So it was cool to see, and we got some good drone footage to hopefully have everyone appreciate. So awesome. thank you for, for doing that. Guy. Thank you very Always much. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you guys. guys. All right, guys. Video. Yeah, it should be pretty cool. It's up to these guys now. <laughs> Let's make our way and change our underwear. <laughs> so now that we left the guys, I just wanted to go over kind of the takeaway we got from all this. Uh, we heard that Seakeeper came out with this product. It's kind of like a trim tab of some sort. We had really no idea, but it's way more than that. I mean, these guys have technology that's used up in space stations to be able to, uh, or I guess it enabled them to create the algorithm and, and the, this entire system, which is a whole stabilization system. It's not a trim tab system. It stabilizes the boat and hits a hundred different points and adjusts a hundred different times every second and has like a thousand different calculations happening every second. So incredible technology behind it, super impressive. It has blown our mind and you have to test it to feel it. You gotta ride it. It completely has revolutionized between that and the gyro, the whole boating experience from the new boater to the seasoned boater, it's gonna be something you're gonna want on your boat, trust me. So came back to Philly, headed towards the airport. You can't go to Philly without grabbing a cheesesteak sandwich. So last time we came for the Valhalla event, I think we hit Gino's steak, which is good. We got Pat's on this side. We might give this one a try. They're the most famous. I don't know if they were on a TV show or something. They say there's maybe even better places around, but we're gonna give one of these a shot. All right, so I want the mushroom onion with, with. That means with cheese for you guys that aren't up with the lingo. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this because we gotta hurry up and get to the airport because we're gonna miss a freaking plane. Hmm. Made like, my God. You're a gentleman back there. Beautifully done, beautifully done. currently 4.30, we have to catch, we have to be on our plane by 5.15, 5.30 flight. We just dropped the rental car off, got on this bus, gotta make it over to the airport, check in this massive Pelican case and get on the plane in 45 minutes. It's gonna be a photo finish, ladies and gentlemen. So we made it by the hair on our chin. Just got here, they're boarding it, so all good. Hopefully the flight is a smooth one. We've heard uh, obviously issues with delayed flights. We had no problems at all. So we'll make it back to Miami and make it to another day. Hopefully we'll see you on the other side. wrapped up our trip with Seakeeper over in uh, New Jersey. Super impressed overall. Can't wait for the masses to see this product and we have no doubt that it's gonna be even more well adopted compared to the gyro that they have obviously standard and just about everything out there. So if you guys like what you see, subscribe, share with your friends, pass this stuff along, it helps us out. 
and we appreciate you tuning in. Thank you again. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only.